Aminatore is now in the Mightiest Governor. Rip a call, we hardly knew you, and here is your hard counter. So in this video, we're gonna walk through everything you need to know about Aminatore, the new archer commander that I think is going to define the garrison situation in Rise of Kingdoms. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and in this full guide on Aminatore, we're going to walk through whether or not she's worth going for from the Mightiest Governor. And yeah, I really think she's going to shake things up. In this video, we'll review the skills to make sure everybody understands exactly what we're working with here. We're going to talk about the talent builds that you might use on this commander. And of note, this is the first Archer Garrison Support Tree Commander. In fact, it's the first Archer Support Tree combination. We've seen in the game, there are, of course, other Archer-Garrison combos, and we've seen Garrison Support. But Archer-Garrison Support is new, so we'll very briefly run over those talents. And then also, of course, I'm going to talk about the best pairings that I think will emerge for both the Garrison and in the open field. Now, before we get started, I just want to let you know that this is going to be Archer Week on the channel. I've decided it right here and now. I'm going to be doing videos on Archer pairings, the whole meta, uh, yeah, this should be a pretty fun week, but we've got to kick it off with these two commanders, and this video is for Amanatore. So if you want to see the rest of the videos this week, subscribe, throw a like on this video to let me know you're interested in archers, and let's do this thing. Amanatore's skills, we got to understand them to really understand why I think she is going to be meta-changing for Garrison specifically. And first up, Glorious Arrows, deals direct damage factor 1,300, and... Bonus damage of 20% for 3 seconds. This is pretty standard stuff at this point. Moderate to low damage with a damage boost. We've seen this in a number of places. Heck, even Herald has basically the exact same active skill with the exception of being able to convert into AoE, right? But he's got 1,200 damage factor with a 20% damage boost for 3 seconds. Now, <laughs> I would trade that lower damage factor for that AoE possibility any day of the week, except that Amanatori is a garrison captain, and you're probably going to be dealing mostly with 1v1 situations in the garrison. And, and we'll get to why I think she's just okay in the field, but I think she's only just okay there. She's got a 40% archer attack boost. Now, attack is the least important stat to boost by virtue of diminishing returns and how that works in the Season of Conquest KVKs as they're designed today. She also is going to make it so you do increased damage to infantry by 5%, but take 5% more damage from cavalry. Now, this gets a little bit weird for her being perhaps vulnerable to the XYC combos that are very, very powerful and kind of dominating the rally scene right now, but really savage against Pakal, and it's because of this skill right over here, and it's like rip Pakal. The counter's already here, and people have barely even started using him. Here's the counter. Ready? Archers gain 20% increased defense, and their attacks have a 10% chance to dispel all outgoing attack enhancements on targets when this commander is serving as a garrison commander. This dispel can trigger at most every 10 seconds. Now, why is this the hard counter to Pakal. It's actually the hard counter to a number of things, but Herald is the combo you use with Pakal. That was the one and only combo that people seem to have landed on. Now, Herald is giving an increase or stacking attack buff. Now, it comes with a pretty big downside. He's also got a stacking defense reduction. So, if the new commander on Monitore is going to dispel the attack boost from Herald, I mean, Harold just got the briefest reinvigoration of, of relevance for rallying, and now he's irrelevant again because you see that Amanatori show up in the garrison, and you basically just have to cancel. You have to cancel the rally if you're using a Herald. I don't quite understand why the hard counter is already here, but what's also weird is that she's going to counter Gilgamesh, the new commander that's on his way from the Wheel of Fortune. He gives a stacking attack boost. So, not only is she countering the new Meta Archer Rally, she's also countering the current Infantry Meta Rally, which means Cavs could get pretty spicy here. Let's see if she's got anything else in her kit that's going to help her deal with Cavalry, okay? So, the next skill. It looks a little complicated, but uh, very simply put, whenever you take skill damage, you're going to deal damage back, and this can only happen once every 10 seconds. Now, 
In the open field, it's 800 damage factor to three enemies in a fan-shaped area. If you're also in a garrison, though, so instead of open field, if you're in a garrison, in addition to that 800 damage factor, you have a 50% chance to do 500 damage factor and a 20% chance to do an additional 400 damage factor. So it's a, it's a pretty hefty combined damage factor, 1,700, if you sort of shoot the moon and have everything trigger. But again, that's only if you're in the garrison. That's good in Ark of Osiris. That's certainly relevant in KVK. In the open field, this ability is just okay. Now, the reason I say it's just okay is that, sure, if you're in a big brawl, you are going to take skill damage periodically, and a Monitori is going to dish it back. But I just spent many hours battling with an expertise CJ on my restart project, and he also has reactive skill damage, okay? He's got abilities that do some damage back in a fan-shaped area, and the problem with this is you're taking the most skill damage when you're running away and getting focused. Usually you're not getting absolutely crushed and you just stand there and take it until your march is dead. No, what you want to do is run that one march away, bait the rest of the enemy armies into the rest of your team's murder ball, and have everybody converge on them. So by the time you're using, you know, a monitory in the field and she's getting swarmed, if you start to run away, this reactive damage in a frontal cone is really not all that amazing. So I just wanted to mention that because, sure, like the reactive damage is cool, and it's certainly relevant in a big murder ball, but I don't think it's as cool as you might think. And uh, finally, the expertise skill. This commander is immune to silence. Now, this is very important. Interesting pairing with Artemisia. Super relevant in Ark of Osiris for getting swarmed by Guans. You're not going to get silenced. It's, a, it's actually a very big deal. Um, even for garrison swarms, like if they're swarming your garrison with Guan, which they should be, uh, yeah, the, the being able to make it so that the silence effects don't take place is a very big deal, especially, I mean, if they're using Leonidas secondary, he's not going to get as much value either. Now, in addition, active skills reduce the target's rage by 100 per second for two seconds, so 200 total rage, and this can trigger at most once every 10 seconds. Now, that actually has some implications on the pairings that I'm going to recommend to you today as well. But overall, what I think we're looking at here is a commander that is going to just be okay in the open field. They sort of have AoE damage. They're missing march speed. They have attack, which is not a premium stat. You really want a lot of tankiness. They don't reduce the skill damage taken. No defense, no health. They have no special utility. So I think that this commander is just okay, and they only have three skills relevant for the open field, by the way. So uh, another strike against them when you've got all these different great archer options to work with for open field. I think that if you wanted a commander for open field, she's not it. She's not who you would pick, no question. There are certainly other commanders you would pick over her, 100%. Now, normally this is the part of the video where I would go right into talent builds, but I actually want to change up the order a little bit, and I want to start by talking about what pairings I think are going to be relevant, because I think a lot of people are here to see, like, hey, should I invest in a Monotore, and are there commanders that I should pair with that would make a lot of sense? Do I have those commanders? Now, the support tree opens up a lot of possibilities for her to be a primary commander, and I think... Her being a primary commander makes sense for two reasons. First of all, not only does the support tree give you a lot of ability to reduce the damage that you take and a lot of rage generation, but also she is boosting damage dealt by 20%. So in a perfect world, if you are using her in the field, she's the primary commander so that she's going to make it so the secondary commander, when their active skill fires off, does extra damage. I don't know if you could generate enough rage to have her be the secondary commander and have the skill cycle come around fast enough that the primary commander would still have the benefit of this damage boost. Um, you really need like XYC to pull off that sort of a, a result. So a Monitore needs to be the primary commander. And I'll just tell you straight up, my number one pick for her in the open field, Slam Dunk, is going to be a Nebu secondary. Now why is that? Nebu does a ton of AoE damage, so... She's going to boost your damage that you deal, and then bam, you hit him with a big AoE. I really like that one-two punch. Nebu also brings defense. She didn't have any tanky stats. That's very important. 
He brings March speed. She doesn't have any of that. That's very important. And although his third skill is not going to be relevant uh, for open field fighting, the fourth skill is actually pretty chill. It's making it so that you deal more damage, but more importantly, there's a rage reduction effect here. So the two of these commanders combined can be reducing the enemy's rage by 300 total. And okay, his rage reduction can actually trigger even more frequently. So there's a 10% chance though, so it's not going to happen all that frequently to be perfectly honest. But I mention that because that's a lot of rage reduction. I like this. If you're using a Monotore in the field and you've got a lot of silent trials to reduce rage to, you pair with Nebu, you could do some very interesting things with manipulating the rage of one specific enemy. But that is really my number one pick for a pairing in the open field with a Monotore. There is another pairing that I think we need to talk about that's fairly obvious. And the reason I say it's obvious is because Artemisia has a self-silence. Now, Artemisia is also very tanky, but the self-silence that she does probably cannot take effect. It cannot take effect if you have the Amonitori pairing. Now, the question I have, and people are saying that this actually doesn't work, but I'll be eager to see if this is true or not when we actually test with Amonitori. Uh, people have been telling me that if she doesn't get the silence, if she doesn't get hit by her own self-silence, that you can't actually trigger the bonus damage. I don't know if that's true or not, but let's just assume for the purpose of this video that the synergy is there and that it works really nicely. I think that Artemisia secondary will be really amazing. If you are removing the downside of this ability, man, that is just so cool. That is just so amazing. That is honestly astonishingly good. And that could be a really good open field pair with a Monotore primary. Why am I saying that? A Monotore primary, is going to make it so that you're going to massively generate rage, okay, and boost the damage you deal by 20%. Also, because of the support tree, and we'll look at the talents pretty soon, when Artemisia does damage to herself, you actually have the potential of getting some upside to reducing the skill damage that you take even more, which is kind of insane. So you're going to have a way to machine gun out Artemisia's AoE, which is really high damage factor, and in addition... 40% of tanky stats, and in addition, because your skill cycles are going really, 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 really fast, now, <laughs> all of a sudden, you want to have more opportunities for this to happen, for you to get silenced, but not silenced, and then get the damage boost. I think that's really nutty. I think the two together could be just really gangbuster. I actually, like, maybe they will be better than Nebu as a pair. I think it's, it's conceivable that could be the case, even though this skill, not even relevant for the open field. Artemisia could still be pretty strong, and of course, there is this 10% chance to do damage over time, and I really like instant proc damage. Damage over time is, it's still instant proc, but damage over time is not quite as good as just full front-loaded instant proc damage, but that pair could actually be just a nice damage pair for the field. No utility there, zero utility, which gives it a major strike, in my opinion, for a high-end murder ball, because unless you think, unless you think that a Monotore with Artemisia is going to be more damage than Nebu with Esong, I think you'd always just use that. Now, as far as other commanders go for open field, there's a few that I want to highlight, and we'll go through all the archers, I suppose, but Cyrus the Great, I think, brings the march speed, but doesn't bring the tankiness that you'd want with a Monotaurus, so they'd be a little bit glass cannon as a pair. They do a lot of damage, but I don't think I would break up the Cyrus Ram pair to make that happen. And on the topic of Ramses, I still think Cyrus Ram is a better pair than Amanatore Ram. You would definitely use Amanatore as the primary to sort of fire off this debuff from Ramses more frequently. And I think there's a lot of value to doing that. Um, Ramses is going to bring a ton of tankiness here, but I think that the Cyrus is just better for open field anyways. So if you were going to invest in Amanatore and you already had Ramses, that's a thing you could go for. Uh, but if you have the Cyrus Ram, I think you just stick with that. Also, I think that in terms of other archers, Esong is just going to be too squishy as a pair for open field. I mean, it's just super glass cannon, and I like the idea of powering up your damage by 20% and then, you know, smacking them with a big AoE and the rage generation is really good. And boosting your attack is just really crazy, but I'm just not in love with that pairing because, again, I feel like all of that is just way too squishy, way too glass cannon. Uh, to go over just the remaining archers that we need to talk about, Tamaris doesn't make sense. You always want Tamaris to be paired with a commander that has the slowest skill cycle in your murder ball, 
Um, and that's not going to be the case with the Montori. She's going to power out skills very, very quickly. So I don't think that makes a lot of sense. That's because you want these poison stacks to add up, add up, add up. Edward of Woodstock doesn't make sense because he's got a very slow skill cycle. And the final archer, I guess I need to mention, is El Cid. I don't think El Cid is a particularly bad pair, but I just don't think it's a particularly good pair either because El Cid is just not meta these days. So yes, firing off your active skill very frequently does mean that you'll get this disable effect very, very quickly. And that synergy I really like. And I don't think that Amanatore El Cid would be a bad pair, but if I was bringing one pair to do really something awesome to single targets and, and do lots of single target damage and to have some utility, it again will be the Cyrus Ramses combo, not the Amanatore Sid combo, which I think is decent, but not out of this world. And, you know, okay, do I think that Gilgamesh will be a good pairing? I think that's an interesting idea. I think that if you were to do it, it would be a monetary primary. Then you're going to have this health reduction fire off very, very quickly, which I think is very powerful. That I like. I like that there's a health bonus over here. The tankiness is really important. There's a little bit of tankiness coming from reducing the normal attack damage that you take. But I don't think that Gilgamesh is going to be a top tier pair with a monetary in the open field. I don't really feel like compared to the other options I've, I've sort of provided here, that would be at the very top. And I will throw in one really creative pair, okay? Anytime a new commander comes out, I just like to get a look and say, you know, would that work with Trajan? But would it? And I think the answer for Amanatori is, is a solid yes. So none of Amanatori's skills, by the way, require her to have only archers. So what does that mean? If you use a monetary as the secondary to Trajan, you may or may not get the benefit of the 20% damage hitting the active skill cycle on the Trajan, and that's actually kind of okay. Trajan's already got a ton of defensive stats, so here you're getting the benefit of a lot of attack, which brings punch. And because Trajan is in the mix and he stays there for a while, and he can tank, even with an monetary secondary who's not all that tanky or really bringing any tankiness at all, the thing that's really crazy about the Trajan pairing is that, I mean, you're going to do a bunch of skill damage in, a, in a sort of this reactive fan shape out from a Monotori, and you can't get silenced, right? So Trajan is generating lots of rage, trying to fire off those active skills as fast as you can. You put a Guan on that, and it can really hinder the whole team getting a lot of buffs, but she makes you immune to silence, which is kind of a cool idea. So I think that Trajan on is, I mean... Do I think it's top tier? No, but do I think it ain't bad? Yeah, I think it actually could be pretty good, and I'd kind of like to see that in the field. I don't think you'd use her as the primary, even though even though it's kind of it's tempting. I just don't think there's enough talent points that benefit everybody for that to make sense. I think talents really kind of get you there to the point where you'd want Trajan to be, be the primary because you really want the mixed troops. And from a garrison standpoint, I'll just cover this very, very briefly. I think there's two standout options for me, and we just got to test them, which is why like, I could talk about it, but I think it needs a lot of testing. That's going to be Artemisia as a pairing, and you'd use a Monotori as the primary for all those same reasons we talked about for open field. And also, you could, I think, use a YSS secondary. And I think a YSS secondary would work really, really well. The reason that I'm saying you want YSS as the secondary is that you know, you're going to bring mostly archers anyways. And if you're bringing mostly archers, you may as well have those talent points in the archer tree that really benefit you there. While well, I struggle to find the YSS, this is because my microphone is actually kind of blocking my line of sight a little bit here. Anyways, uh, yeah, so YSS I think would be a great pair. I think it's going to work. I think Amanatore YSS or possibly uh, Amanatore Artemisia is going to be the meta. Do I think you should rush, rush out and invest? I think the answer is a solid no. The reason I say that is you should wait for some whale to start sending out reports proving that it works, and then you're good to go at that point. Then, and only then, should you consider really going for that investment. To very briefly cover the talents that I think are going to be relevant here, I'm going to give you a quick look at my Zenobia, because part of the build stays the same. The formula here in the garrison tree, it stays the same. That's 13 points that you're going to commit. The formula here in the support tree remains mostly the same, but because you don't have healing, you're going to free up four points. So that means you'll be at 
35 points, okay, in the support tree. That leaves you with a grand total of 48 points spent, and that means you have 26 points remaining. So to show you what I would do with the points in the archer tree, I'm going to pull up Kira since I put the points on her right over here. This to me feels like a really solid way to round out your 26 points in the archer tree. You really got to get the extra damage to infantry. That's like the whole point of using a monotory is to counter the call rallies. I think in part that that is like just one of the main reasons that you're doing that. Also, boosting your health is really great. Making it so you have more normal attack damage is really, really good. Uh, this also makes it so you have 9% attack when you're below 50%, which you will be in a garrison situation. No question about that. That's really valuable. And again, this is a garrison build that I'm going over. I guess I should have said that at the start because I think primarily she's in the mix for garrison, okay? And I went up to Venomous Sting for the extra skill damage because that felt really strong to me. You could carve off all these points because there's a lot of march speed on the way here. And instead, go off to the sides for full quiver, just get more stats. Go off to the sides, razor sharp, get a little bit of rage gen. And if you wanted an open field build, I think the answer there is actually even more easy. You're going to go just all in on the archer tree all the way to the top. You're going to use all archers. And you'll do a little bit of the support tree like you would with, for instance, Saladin. And I guess he's got conquering, so maybe that's not the best example um, but, you know, you'd go in here and you'd do something similar to what I've done here, although maybe I'd go all the way to emergency protection if you've got the points for it. And that's what you'd put into the support tree. You'd be entirely to the top of the archer tree and then make your way to emergency protection rejuvenate, and you've got a hell of a build. If you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor, throw a like on here and consider subscribing. We'll be back tomorrow with a guide on Gilgamesh. The day after that, I'm probably going to do a tier list for legendaries, re-ranking where everything is going to be in Rise of Kingdoms. And I've got a few other Archer videos cooking up, so consider subscribing so you don't miss a thing. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.